Hey there, it's Peter at the Film Scoring Department in Berklee College of Music. I'm working in Pro Tools today to do a layout so that I can score a scene in a movie. I'm using Pro Tools version 11.3.1, and I've already imported a video and checked to make sure it's in sync. If you haven't done that and you don't know how to do that, look in the description of this video for a link to another video where you can do that first. I already have my video here. Here's my video window and this track is the video track. This track is the soundtrack of that video. If I click somewhere in the video I can check to make sure I'm in sync just by seeing that the counter up here which is displaying time code matches the time code shown here in the video. I also like to check at the end of the video to make sure I'm not drifting out over time and as you can see Time code display in Pro Tools matches time code display in the movie. They're in sync. What I want to do today is lay this out in Pro Tools so that at the, the frame in the video where the music should start, I want Pro Tools to display bar one, beat one. And I want Pro Tools to have a tempo established there. And then I want to use very subtle tempo changes throughout so that each important picture obligation in the movie lines up with the downbeat of a measure. It's important that the overall tempo of the whole cue remain about the same throughout. I don't really want to use tempos to, in a creative way. It's an action scene and I just want it to drive forward at one tempo. But I am going to make very small imperceivable tempo changes so that I can align those picture obligations exactly with the downbeat of a measure, which they're close to. My first step is to bring up the memory locations window in Pro Tools. I can do that by hitting Command 5 on the number pad. The first location I have to go to is the music in time. I can type it right in here in the counter. One hour, zero minutes, four seconds, and 21 frames. This place in the movie, the close-up of the two actors in the car, is where the music should start. I'll go to the little triangle, the little mini menu in the memory locations window, and select new memory location. I'm going to call this MX in. Music in. I'm being very careful to select absolute as the reference. I want this memory locator or marker to always be connected to this position in time code, regardless of where it winds up on measure numbers. I want it to be locked to this image on the screen. So that's why I chose absolute. Looking at the memory locations window, if you're not seeing this display, one column showing time code, one column showing bars and beats, you can just click on that little triangle and select those items so that you have the right display. Now there's a few other locations other than the start of the music. And I'll type them in. I'll start with this next one, which is at 1 hour, 0 minutes, 52 seconds, and 20 frames. This is a point in this car chase scene where the car goes up on the sidewalk. I'll go to the little mini menu, pick new memory location, Type in car on sidewalk as my description. Again, making sure I've selected absolute. Click OK. The next location I want to put a marker for is at one hour, one minute, 18 seconds, and five frames. In this view, we're seeing the, the point of view of the cops on the motorcycles chasing the car. Make a new marker there. New memory location from the mini menu. Cops chase car. Always making sure it says absolute. Click OK. The last location I want to mark is one hour one minute, 
57 seconds, 21 frames. There's a close-up. It's hard to see the image, but I know because I played through the video. There's a close-up here of the car. And at this location, I actually want my last chords for this cue, this music cue, to strike on this image. A sort of a hit and tail. The last chords hit there and ring out. Put a new memory location. Hit and tail. Again, making sure it's absolute. Now at least I have these markers showing these key synchronization points. If I click on any one of them, it moves the transport inserted to that point in time code and shows that image on the video. And each one of these memory locations is locked to the time code. They're not locked to the bars and beats. In fact, if I change the tempos around, you should see changes in where they're located in the measures. If I drag this tempo up to be much faster, oh, let's say around 150 or so, which is, well, here's 151. That's a good tempo for this cue musically. You notice all these numbers have now changed here. This one in particular, Music In, this scene where the two actors are in a close-up in the car, is starting at uh, measure 4, beat 1, tick 270. Well, that's not very musically useful. It actually it would be helpful if it was starting at measure 1, beat 1, tick 0. So let's establish that right now. Event, time operations, move song start. I have the checkbox here for renumber the song start to bar one. And I don't need to move anything actually other than the song start. I'll hit apply. All these SMPTE the addresses are still the same. Those are locked to the video. But this first one now is on measure one, beat one. Good place to start off. I'm gonna hit save at this point. If I, if I insert a click track into this thing, I should be able to hear this thing clicking away, starting there. Track, create click track. There's a new track. And assuming that this track has an output that comes to my speakers, I should be able to hear this thing when we click away at bar one, beat one. 150 beats a minute, which we want to stay close to throughout this thing. We don't really want to hear any perceivable changes in tempo, but it might be useful in getting the rest of these markers to line up on the downbeats of measures before we write in any music. Let's look at this next marker here. Car on sidewalk. Looking at the bar beat location, it does appear to be right near the first beat of measure 31. It's, it's after it. It's almost to the second beat of measure 31 is where that's located. Well, that means this music's going by fast enough that when we get to measure 31, we haven't arrived at this picture frame yet. And we go even a little further past beat one before we see this image. That means if we slow down a little tiny bit, we, it's possible that we could actually be arriving at this image on the screen right at measure 31, the downbeat. It is possible. I don't know how much slower I'd have to go, but the computer can calculate that and insert the change of tempo into the tempo track of Pro Tools for me. Here's how we do it. Event, tempo operations, tempo operations window. This is also available at option number pad two. You'll note that the mode is set to constant and the advanced checkbox is checked. I'd like to be able to enter a bar range of the area between the starting point and this first picture obligation. So I'm gonna switch my counter to say bars and beats. And now I'm able to enter that here using bars and beats. Starting from the beginning, measure one. And we're so close to measure 31 with this that's what we're going to use as our target. Let's set it to zero ticks. Measure 31, beat one, zero ticks. We want Pro Tools to be calculating the tempo of this. 
the end time should be 1 hour, 0 minutes, 52 seconds, and 20 frames. So we have to make sure that's entered. When we click out of that field, Pro Tools is showing us here what tempo it would use to arrive. And that's very close to our starting tempo, which was, we were shooting for something around 150 beats a minute. This is 149.9. That's very close, so that's great. When we hit apply, it inserts that tempo into the, the tempo track of Pro Tools. We don't have to have this box checked. We can, we can just have it continue with whatever change of tempo, just have it continue after this range of bars. So I'm going to hit apply. And you can see here in the conductor track, that tempo has been inserted. You can also see over in the memory locations window, now this marker, this memory location, car on sidewalk, although it's still at one hour, zero minutes, 52 seconds, 20 frames, it's, it's locked to video. This marker actually now is right on the downbeat. I'm going to continue to move through the queue one location after the next. You'll notice that I don't jump around to the end of the queue and work backwards. That would disrupt the timing of things. You, you really have to work from, from the beginning to the end of the queue. Otherwise, things you change in the beginning disrupt the end synchronization. So my next memory location that I want to move to a downbeat is this one, Cops Chase Car. Currently located in measure 46, beat 4, tick 473. Well, it's almost in measure 47, where it's located right now. So I could have the computer just find a tempo that allows it to coincide with the downbeat of measure 47. Now the range that I'll be changing the tempo in will start at measure 31, right where we left off before. There'll be a new tempo through to measure 47. And this marker will reside there. Let's try it out. Here's the tempo operations window. You can type in a new range of tempos. Starting at measure, oops, measure 31 is the starting measure. Ending at measure 47. The timing should be the timing of this picture obligation. One hour, one minute. 18 seconds and 5 frames. Almost there anyways. Click out of that field. Pro Tools tells us that the tempo that it would use to achieve this is 151 point something beats per minute. That's very close to where we started, so that's a very good tempo. No one could hear a small change in tempo going from 149 to 151, so that's very good. I'm going to hit apply and it'll put it here in the tempo track. You can see it's inserted there can also see here in the memory locations window that now that marker, still at 1 hour, 1 minute, 18 seconds, and 5 frames, is now residing the downbeat of measure 47. It's very easy now to start a change of music or start a melody or start a groove or some kind of accent musically to coincide with this picture image. The last synchronization point I have is very close to the downbeat of measure 72. It's just a few ticks after it. So I can have the computer retime, recalculate the tempo from measure 47 to the downbeat of measure 72, a new tempo, so that this marker resides exactly at the downbeat of measure 72. Let's try it out starting at measure 47. That's just where we left off last. Ending at 72, the nearest downbeat to where we're heading for. Using the timing of that marker, one hour, one minute, 57 seconds, 21 frames. If I click outside of the field, it tells me it's gonna to go to this tempo, very close to where we were. We hit apply. New tempo is inserted in the tempo track. And the location now of this marker is on the downbeat of bar 72.